Hey there, friends. Welcome to Just the Gems. I'm Brandon, and you know, it's time we tackle our New Year's resolutions. That's right, it is January 2023, and I find myself once again on a treadmill. I figure it's been six months, probably time to get some exercise again. So once again, today we're going to be participating in the Don't Say Um Challenge. What does that mean? Well, if you saw my previous video, you probably already know and you're saying it aloud with me, but in case you didn't, I'm going to go through all of my holiday Christmas time pickups with you all as I walk slash run on this treadmill. Every time that I say the word um or uh or mm or any kind of verbal clutter that is just me not knowing what to say next, I have to increase the speed on the treadmill. Now, to keep myself honest so that I can't cheat and cut around any of my ums, I have my wife, Jen, here. Can you stick your arm out? You can see her. I can't see what you're seeing right now. She's there, though. She really is. Um, you'll, you'll see the games floating towards me at some point. Um, she is going to keep me... That doesn't count. I said, um, doesn't count. We haven't started. I have not started yet. Okay. So, yes, she's going to hand me the games. She's going to keep me honest. If I say, um, I've got to increase the speed. Okay? So... We'll start off at a, at a nice leisurely pace and we'll go through my pickups one by one. Just got an interesting question from Jen. She said, does it count as a pickup when you get it as a gift? I think it's an etymological question, personally. For the purposes of our video, we're going to say yes. Christmas pickup involves anything that I received for Christmas or that I selfishly bought for myself. I started at three. And every time I say, um, I'm going to go up three notches. Now there's 10 notches in between each, each uh, level. So starting at level three, I'm going to go up by three. Every time I say, um, I'm going to do my best. I already, I'm, I'm really tired. I haven't even started. Here we go. Okay. First up, we have Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. This is... I believe I mentioned before the first Fire Emblem game I ever tried. I purchased it digitally. We went on vacation. I brought it along to play like in the hotel rooms in the evening. And I got, I don't know, probably 10 hours into it. And then we came home and I had never picked it up again, even though I was enjoying it. So I really wanted to add it physically to the collection. And I've done that now. So here we go. Okay. Langrisser, one and two. This is one that I picked up myself shortly after the holiday season ended. Um, okay, so per the rules, we're increasing the speed. I'm not going to say that word again. Pick this up. It is a remake of some classic Genesis Mega Drive tactical role-playing games. Don't know a ton about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm really just gonna, this, this is gonna be it for me. So yeah, I don't know a ton about Langrisser 1 and 2, but I'm excited to have it in the collection. I will get to it soon. Tactics Ogre Reborn. This is one that I'm currently playing. I have started this actually just last night. And yeah, like I said before, I've never really played a ton of tactical games. I thought it was because I didn't like the medieval epic kingdom warfare storylines and things like that. I think actually what the problem is, is that they're really hard and I'm really bad at video games. So I'm playing through this, I think I get to the, I don't know, fourth battle and I died. Like no, it wasn't even close. Like I got slaughtered. So I'm thinking, what am I doing? I, I, I asked for almost nothing but tactical strategy RPGs for Christmas. You're gonna see quite a few more. What am I doing with myself? It's ridiculous, but you know what? It's it's a cool game. The, the voice acting is really good. The graphics are pretty. And I'm gonna see it through to the end. Whew. This is nothing. There are people that are more athletic than me watching this and they're like, what is wrong with this person? Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Okay, so this is the remake, remaster, whatever of the PlayStation Portable PSP, prequel to Final Fantasy VII. Big fan of this story. Zack is a great character. I bawled like a baby playing the original game. When I got to the end, and Jen, I don't know if you remember this, but she was there, she saw it, and she thought something was seriously wrong. 
And I was like, no, it's just the ending of this video game that I knew, I knew going into it what the ending was. It's a prequel. Still, like, they just did such a good job of really affecting me. So, highly recommend Crisis Core. Get into the whole Final Fantasy VII thing now as they're, they're releasing these new games. Very worth your time. Okay, Valkyrie Elysium. So, I'm trying to collect all of the Valkyrie profile games. I believe this is part of that series. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. And I think, was it my man Jay from Cold Nights Gaming who picked this one up recently? I gotta talk to you about this. I'm curious to see how you like it. But also, if you played this and you're not Jay from Cold Nights Gaming, let me know what you think of it in the comments. I haven't heard a ton about it. The little bit that I have heard has been kind of middle of the road, but I'm a collector and a completionist, so even if it wasn't great, I still would want to have it anyway, so here it is. That's like three in a row without any bad words. You know, the bad words that I'm not supposed to... for the, for the thing. Okay. Monster Hunter Stories. This was the, the Dark Horse gift. I, I don't even know if I technically asked for this, but Jen picked up on some of my subtle hints, clues. I don't even know if I was intending them to be hints and clues, but she went out of her way and found a nice eBay seller who sold this to her for a reasonable price, and now I have it. And I'm playing through this now as well. This is my portable game. I'm trying to do the thing that I think it was at Thumb Trooper talked about how she's doing a portable game and a TV game, and that's kind of how she's playing two games simultaneously. Sorry if it wasn't you, it was somebody else, and I'm forgetting. All the blood is rushing to my limbs right now, I can't think. But yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm maybe two hours in, but, but it's a good time. Okay, NG, mm. beware the creeping horror, it says. So this is the, I don't know if it's considered a sequel or just spiritually connected to Deathmark, which I have on the Vita and currently sort of playing through between other things. It's a very episodic sort of uh, visual novel type story, so it's easy to pick up and put down. But, um, shoot. Okay, that's stupid. Could have gotten through this one real quick and just moved on, but I didn't, I'm an idiot. So this looks creepy. If it's anything like the uh, previous, <laughs> like the previous game, I'm sure it'll be good. So there you go. Star Ocean, the divine force. My plan, I've said before, this year, 2023, is to marathon my way through the Star Ocean games. Playing any of the remakes that are available, I'm not gonna play the Super Famicom original Star Ocean, for example. I'm gonna play the, I have it on PSP, but I'm gonna play the, uh, ugh. I'm gonna play the remake for modern consoles. But yeah, that's the plan. Always been meaning to play through these games. They kind of branched off of the, the tree that originally gave us uh, the Tales. <laughs> the Tales of series. So, looking forward to this marathon sometime this year. The Quarry. So, The Quarry is another cinematic movie type game from, is it super massive or super giant? I don't know, I, don't, I can't look, I'm running, I'm tired. It's by some super massive, super massive games. In the vein of Until Dawn, or their Dark Pictures Anthology. This is their most recent full-length title. Don't know much about it, but it looks like there's a Spookums man here behind these teens. He looks like he's gonna get them. We're gonna try it. I should have set my watch. Might as well get credit, but it's too late now. Monster Hunter Stories 2. The sequel to Monster Hunter Stories. I did have this one on my list, and I thought maybe that's how Jen knew about the first one. Because I wasn't made a comment that I really wanted to play the first one before I played the second, but that was harder to come by. I like to pick this one up anyway, so yeah, looks interesting. Silent protagonist, lots of monsters, little cat people that talk. Exciting times. This is worse. This is worse than the first one. There's a lot more games too. 
the Dio Guild product. Another tactical strategy role-playing game that I'm probably gonna suck at, that I'll make some excuse or another about why I couldn't get through it. Oh, the storyline was too this or that, the characters didn't. That's because it's gonna be too hard. All right, if at any point you hear me complaining about any of these games on this channel or Twitter, follow me on Twitter, you can call me out. I'm telling you right now, it's because it was too hard and I suck. Triangle strategy. Once again, strategy role-playing game. It looks beautiful. I've heard good things about the story. This one didn't come in until after Christmas, actually. Delayed shipping, so my wife got me an alternative, which was very sweet, but I beat it in like two minutes, so I guess I'm just too smart. All right, a Plague Tale Requiem. A Plague Tale Innocence, the first game, was a real dark horse sleeper hit for a game. Did not expect it to be as amazing as it was. It is a cinematic masterpiece of a game. It takes place in like this alternate reality, medieval France, where there's like a plague of rats, but they can be controlled by this little wizard boy or something. It's crazy cool. There's a sad scene beginning of the first game with the dog. Trigger warning for that. Love dogs. Must love dogs. But I'm really looking forward to getting to the sequel. And finally, thank God, the Nintendo Switch OLED. I was not gonna pick this up because I already have a Switch. <laughs> Whoops. You just roll with it. That's what a pro would do. I was not going to pick up the Switch OLED. Because I already have a Switch. However, over the Christmas break, my Switch fan started making the most terrible noises that I've ever seen or heard. You can't see a noise. The noises go here. You just go here. Terrible noise. And then eventually, it stopped altogether. So I've got a broken fan. Now I can go get that repaired. That's a reasonable alternative. Probably cost me 80 bucks. But shiny new tech. Actually shiny new tech. The screen is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's fun to play handheld. Never used to like playing handheld. Now I love it. The screen is great. If you're in the market for a Switch, Highly recommend. Those are my holiday pickups. This is harder than I thought. I only messed up like five or six times, but it's enough to destroy me. Anyway, I would love to hear what you picked up over the holidays. Drop me a comment. Send me a link to a video of your own if you have one. It's not self-promotion if I'm asking for it, so promote away. If you like the video, if you like the sort of content I make, if you want to see me destroy myself in other interesting ways, subscribe to the channel. Let me know you're out there. And until next time, bye.